Hello, I'm Karen from the needlefelter.com. Today we're going to use a dryer ball to make a kiwi bird. I created a sketch for my kiwi bird and I made it large enough so that the dryer ball will fit right inside the body. So I'm going to use the dryer ball as the core for this sculpture. The Arena Hughes Reister project helped me feel a little bit more confident about making pieces that are precariously balanced, if you will. So I have to figure out how to make this armature work with just three toes pointing forward and still balance all the weight from the top of this body. And just for a little bit of added realism, I think I'm going to make the claws and the beak out of cos clay. So let's get started on the armature. So I sketched in where the dryer ball will sit to create the structure of the body or sort of the core of the body. And also how I'm going to attach my armature wires into it. So I'll just glue them into the dryer ball. I'll just poke holes and glue them in. And my plan is to use 14 gauge wire for the legs and toes and the neck. I cut three 15 inch pieces of 14 gauge wire to make the legs and the feet. So I'm going to start by folding these in half. And then what I want to do is kind of try to keep these flat and twist them down. I'm not as worried about the twist being clean for the part that's up in the body, but I'm more worried about the one, the part that will be, you know, from the ankle to the foot. So let me just try to start twisting these. It, it doesn't need to be tight. It can be just loosely twisted. That's about right there. Do the same on the other side. All right. And then I want to try to make these even as I fold them forwards because that's how the bird will sit. So if that means twisting one down a little bit more, that's okay. And I want to bend them both forward at about three and a quarter inches. So right about there. And do the same on this side. Okay. And then kind of separate them apart. And we're going to make them make your, my three toes. I'm just trying to smooth and straighten these out a little bit. And this will have to bend forward, so we're going to have it bend back and then bend forward about right there. Maybe a little further up actually. I think I might have drawn this a little short. So I'm going to bend it a little higher than that. Um, I'll just make it one and three quarter inches to make it easy. So I want to bend it about right here on both sides. Maybe I can do them together like this. get that angle so that feet are angled down and this is the part that will go up into the dryer ball so it'll look something like that but let's go ahead and trim these feet there had a little too much wire I wasn't sure how much I would need for the twist so I cut them a little bit longer and now what I want to do is cut the middle toes at about one, one and a half inches and the side toes about one and a quarter. And I'm measuring from kind of that ankle bend. So about one and a half. And then and do the same on the other side and there's my armature 
So right now it's wanting to roll backwards, but that's okay because we're gonna put this dryer ball on the front, which will help shift the weight forward on it, if that makes sense. Because the beak is long and thin, I'm going to try galvanized steel wire for that. It's stiffer and I can use a thinner piece that I think will still give me enough support to be able to just build the beak and then glue it into the head. So I cut a four inch piece of the galvanized steel wire. I also cut one seven inch piece of 14 gauge wire. I'm going to use that to make just the neck and kind of support the head. So the first thing I'll do is just fold the neck wire in half, kind of try to line it up as best I can. And, and then I'm just going to twist it. And that'll be my wire for the neck. It's a little longer than my sketch, but that's okay. It gives me a little bit of extra to play with. So here are my final armature pieces. I'm going to go ahead and start the clay claws and beak. I was getting ready to start creating the claws for the kiwi bird, and I decided to look at a couple reference photos. That made me realize that I forgot about the dew claws. I didn't make any kind of armature piece to support those. It was just a great reminder that you should always look at reference photos at every step of your project when you're making an animal. It will save you so much heartache in the end. So I decided that I will add the dew claws to the armature. I'm using some 24 gauge, just standard craft wire. The color really doesn't matter because it will be covered up. For the claws in the beak, I'm using cost clay doll. There are different types of cost clay, but this is the only one I've used. I purchased the fairy light color, mainly because it's closest to white. The majority of the time I make something out of clay, I'm going to paint it, and I'd rather start with that lighter base. I like it especially for small pieces like claws because after you bake it, it still stays a little bit flexible. One of my pain points with Palmer clay is that it can sometimes be brittle, and this just takes that away. It's like a miracle clay. So to make the claws, I just sort of hold off a little bit of clay. I kind of roll it and then I slice off a little bit. I try to just, if I'm making claws, so I want them to be somewhat even, I'll just try to slice off kind of equal sizes as much as possible. And that's just a way of helping keep the claws symmetrical. And then I just sort of lightly roll it pressing on one side to make kind of a cone shape. So it looks like that. And then I take the cone put the end of the wire in it and I like to just sort of press it down a little bit at the base and then give the claw a little bit of a curve. So I've already made my claws I also made two dew claws, and what I'll do then is take this wire and just sort of uh, wrap it onto the armature and have these coming out at the appropriate place on the back of the leg. I also made a beak. I sculpted the beak with a few of my clay tools, and then I added the two nostrils at the very tip of the beak. Did you know that kiwis are the only birds in the world with nostrils at the tip of their beak? Once I had the claws and the beak sculpted, I was ready to bake them. For the beak and the dew claws, I just balled up a little piece of aluminum foil and hooked the wire in to support them. I baked the claws for 30 minutes at 275 degrees Fahrenheit or 135 degrees centigrade. The instruction said to bake your piece 30 minutes for every quarter inch of clay. So after 30 minutes, I removed the claws and then baked the beak for an extra 30 minutes just because it's thicker here and here. The fantastic thing about cost clay is that after it's baked, it still remains slightly flexible. So you can see I can, I can bend the beak even with the wire inside of it. And this is why I really love it is these toes can, can take quite a bit. I, I don't know what would happen if I tried to bend them all the way back, they may break. But you can see if it were to fall or get bumped, it's not going to just snap off. And that's why I love cost clay. 
I roughed out the shape of a head using some core wool on the neck wire that I had twisted. I'll still be adding more core wool to the head and building up the front of the face, but I just wanted to get a little bit on that wire so that it'll help me place it in the dryer ball. I already cut a couple kind of trial slits into the dryer ball for the legs. So I think I'm going to go with putting it more in that middle spot there. So you can see it's not in the middle of the dryer ball, but it's just a little bit behind that. And if you're interested, the way I cut that was I just started with these Fiskars shears and just started by cutting a little bit and then a little more and a little more, just widening it out. These were great for that kind of thing. So I'm going to use some E6000. And E6000 does take a little while to cure. They recommend you let it sit for um, 24 hours. And then go ahead and put the wire in, get it placed where I want it. So now we just have to put the neck in and I'm going to use an awl. I forgot, I want to spread these legs out just a little bit so I can get kind of line up where the head will go. So maybe more, more about there. And because this wire is pretty wide, it doesn't hurt again to cut into the dryer ball. So let's try that. And that's not bad. I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and glue the wire in. Make sure you have the head at the right angle. So I'm going to set this aside, let it dry overnight, and then tomorrow I'll add more core wool to build up the face and the rest of the head, fill in this kind of neck area, um, the thighs maybe a little bit, and the, the, kind of the back and the tail. I decided that I needed to cover the dryer ball just because it was a little bit hard to see the form of the bird with that big dark chunk of wool in the center so I just put a really really thin coating over it just to help me see the shape but having that dryer ball saved me so much time I didn't have to worry at all about creating a dense firm core because it was already done one area I did focus on was the area around and between the legs I wanted to make sure that that was felted firm also so that the legs would be supported I didn't think about it when I designed it, but the triangle shape at the top of the armature, the bend at the top of the triangle, helps keep the dryer ball from sliding down on the wires. And I think if I had just poked two wires in, this piece wouldn't be as stable. I also built up this sort of shoulder area and the neck and the head. I attached the beak. To attach the fourth claw, I just sort of placed it where I wanted it and then wrapped the wire up the leg, wrapped it around the ankle a couple times and trimmed the excess wire. And I'm just leaving it floating a little bit because I'm going to have to wrap wool around that and this gives me a little bit of flexibility to position the claw um, where it needs to be. I decided to go with the look, well loosely the look of the North Island Brown Kiwi. So I gave the bird a tan beak and I washed in some pink to kind of give it a blush and then went over the whole beak with a thin wash of uh, brown or sort of a dark umber to get into all these cracks and the texture that I had put on the, on the bird's beak and the nostrils. And then for the claws, I just kept them a dark, dark gray. It's all, they're almost black and um, just decided to go real simple with those. There'll be wool covering most of them anyway. I sealed the beak and claws with two coats of Liquitex acrylic varnish. I've attached the glass eyes. I just used E6000 to do that. I think they they look pretty good. He's starting to come to life a little bit. Once I don't know why, but once you get the eyes in, they really start to sort of become a little creature. 
I've started working on the eyelids. I'm using pins. It looks a little weird, but one of the things that can be hard sometimes when you're working with an animal that has the eyes on the side of the face is aligning the front of the eyelids and the back of the eyelids. I marked the point where the eyelid starts on each side and you can sort of just, just make sure that they're aligned top, bottom, and on the sides. And then to make sure that I have the width of the eyelid correct, I can use my sewing gauge and just sort of mark that and measure it on both sides. That lets me check as I'm felting to make sure that I'm keeping them even or, or as even as possible. They don't have to be perfect, but you want them to be believable. So I'm kind of working on the face and the head. Right now I'm using some Shetland Moret comb top. This is great for the kiwi bird color because it this is natural, it's undyed, and it's you can see it's got variations in the color. There's some lighter tones, darker tones, it's just beautiful. I also use merino comb top around the, the eye and in these sort of lighter sections around the face. They do have kind of a lighter area around their their head. Sometimes it goes all the way up on the over the top a little more than I have it here. They also have an ear in here. I didn't put that in because this is so small I don't think it'll make a difference. Just to kind of give the top of their head a little bit of a highlight, I did a mix of the Merino and the Shetland kind of just along this the top of the beak and the top of the head. Now I'm just filling in with plain Shetland. I like to trim as I go. In this case, I know I'm going to be combing the wool back to follow the shape of the bird's head. So to make it easier to trim, you can just sort of, kind of, you know, stick your finger under there and just make sure you're following the shape. And that just helps get a look that's not so 
doesn't look as chopped and looks a little more natural and then you can kind of just fluff it with the tip of the awl a little bit but that's really something I'll do more at the end so I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of the the back of the head and the neck with the Shetland and then we'll move on to the body I covered the body with the Shetland Moret, but I blended in some DHG Serafina fur. It gave the Shetland Moret a golden tone, but I wanted something a bit more dramatic. I ended up adding tiny tufts of the camel color to the bird's back. Let's take a look at the final result. This is where we started, and this is where we ended up. While it was a little time consuming to add the tiny tufts of that camel DHG Serafina fur, it gave me those feathery highlights I was looking for. In hindsight, I think I could have taken the beak further. It could use more sculpting and detail. But for now, I'm happy with this sweet little native New Zealand bird. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And thanks for watching.